Rabbi Ari Levine was once visiting an old friend who had taken ill and had been hospitalized. The man was the head of the Bigger Cholim, the organization which takes care of the needs of the sick. Suddenly, the man started gasping for breath. The monitors went off. The doctors came rushing in. They pulled the curtain and started working on the man. After what seemed forever, they opened the curtain and Rabbi Ari Levine walked in. The man said to him, Rabbi, you're not believe what just happened. As I was having this massive heart attack, I felt my soul ascend towards the heaven, into the heavenly court. And they brought before the court all my good deeds and bad deeds. They started judging me whether I was worthy of getting back to this world or not. It was absolutely terrifying. And then it was decided that since I was involved in Bigger Cholim, I was involved in taking care of the sick, I'd be allowed to return to this earth. But they didn't tell me how to get there. I started wandering in what seemed to be a, a large desert. Finally, I came upon a very large person. And I asked him, can you tell me where to go? And he said to me, do you recognize me? I said, no. He said, think back, 50 years ago, when we were in the shtetl, me, you, and your father were in shul. Nobody wanted to take me home. I was very hungry, I needed something to eat. And you told your father that if he doesn't take me home, then you're not gonna eat either. And the merit of that great kindness that you did for me so many years ago, I'm going to show you the way. And then I was able to descend to the earth. If I may ask a question on a story, why was it that this man who had done so much goodness in his life, the bigger cholim, but yet he had to rely on one little act of kindness that he had done as a little child to be allowed to come back to this earth? It's true that this man had a lifetime achievement of bigger cholim, of kindness. But we have to remember, he was also the head of a very large organization. Think of the glamour and the honor that's involved with that. Perhaps on some level, there was an ulterior motive when he did the mitzvah. He did the mitzvah, but there was also an incentive for honor and glamour. But that very moment, 50 years ago, when he was a little boy, that mitzvah was just pure and sincere, purely unadulterated mitzvah. And the merit of that, he was able to descend. In the Torah portion of Yisro, we read about God giving the Torah to the Jewish people. But you know, the Medrash says that God offered the Torah to all the nations of the world. They asked God, what does it say in your Torah? And God told them the one mitzvah, which was too difficult for them to accept, which was against their very nature, and they declined. I wondered, why is it that with the 613 mitzvahs, God couldn't give them a fair chance, give them a mitzvah, which perhaps they could accept? The Torah was God's greatest gift to humanity. The nation that would receive the Torah would be the chosen people. What nation wouldn't want the honor and the glamour that's associated with this? It is for this reason that God told the nations of the world the one mitzvah which they couldn't accept to test them, to see, did they want the Torah for the glamour and the honor? Or did they want it for the real reason, for the right reason, to achieve closeness to God? If one wants to achieve closeness to God, there's no obstacle that one can't overcome. Like the Jewish people who said, Nasev and Nishma, we will do and we will hear whatever the obstacles, we will accept it. And thus the Jewish people were granted the greatest gift to humanity, 